So we're here in southwestern Pennsylvania, rural property, temperate region, 40 plus inches of rain a year on a dirt road, two dirt roads come together. I got a little water hole right here and it doesn't look like much of a damn water hole, but it does make me happy. I will explain why. Um, this was uh, intentionally dug here. You can see the fresh mineral soil. We're up here in an intersection from a township road to a, uh, to a state road going up the state forest. Um, had a little issue with the, uh, with the state regarding this intersection here so they could bring some timber out. Um, they wanted to move the intersection back and bring some long logs around this, this, this sharp bend. Um, they let it go a little long. They hit some of my trees besides the point. So I put the intersection back to where, you know, reasonable spot for everybody stacked up a lot of stone and a lot of dirt. Um, what would happen is in, when it rains or in the springtime, water coming off this ditch off the township road come around this corner and head down the hill onto the state. And uh, it would erode out pretty pretty well here. Well, I, I have a kind of a policy here trying to keep any water that falls on the property or passes across the property gets slowed down and spread out to soak in as much as possible. So uh, after I was done building that up, I came down here and cleared out some uh, some junk, um, you know, some of these are going to be nice trees, but for the most part, uh, you know, not so much. There's some tupelo, I don't know, maybe cucumber, I don't know, red oak, uh, I see red maple there, tulip, maple behind it, uh, a lot of, a lot of grapevine and stuff. I don't have too much issue with the grapevine as long as it's not attacking a tree that I really like, um, or serves some ecological benefit. So um, this was mostly just uh, some debris and stuff laying here. So I dug this out down several feet to catch the water. And I uh, just just made my ditch a little bit lower than the road. So as that water comes down the hill, it just cuts. And um, the very first rainstorm we got, actually we got a significant amount of rain uh, late last week. Got about two inches of rain in a short period of time. Um, over the course of a day, but still a short period of time for that much rain, considering how dry it's been. And uh, this hole did not completely fill up, but um, it was two feet higher than the water level is right now. And I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, my reasoning is get that water off the road, catch the sediment, um, you know, and, and, and mainly catch the water. I want that water to stay here as long as possible, get a lot of residence time. And to slowly seep into the ground, uh, pr provide, you know, moisture and stuff for the trees and whatnot, but really mainly just avoid the erosion and keep that water. It's fresh water. It's fresh water. It's a rare thing on this planet. You know, let's keep it up here on top of the mountain and let it slowly seep out so the ground is saturated and stays dry or stays wet for as long as possible. And, uh, um, you know, keeps the springs running, keeps the streams running as long as possible through the summer, considering... Um, you know, the direction that our climate appears to be going. So, uh, I cannot think of any reason not to do this. Um, again, catch the water, catch the sediment, slow everything down. But, you know, come springtime, there's going to be frogs in here. There's going to be salamanders in here. There's going to be tadpoles. There's going to be all kinds of insects and things. Animals can come by and get a drink. I have these little bit ponds all over the property. I love it. I absolutely love it. The question is... How long is the water going to stay here? Depends on the, the substrate. Depends on the mineral soil that's there. You know, we have a, a, a deep layer of, of yellow clay. Um, there's some kind of gray mudstone down below that. It's a little more porous and cracks up. Uh, there's coal around here. There's some limestone. Uh, just kind of depends on the spot in the property and how deep you dig. Um, I happen to hit a little bit of rock down there. And I think that's why this one leaks a little bit. Some holes don't leak as much. Um, if it didn't leak at all, filled up full of water, kept filling up and eventually overflowed, it might erode the side away. And, um, it's not going to really break because it's actually below the, the grade of the ground, but, um, it could cause problems if I don't have it well, well designed. And it's not really that well designed. Um, on the other hand, if it leaks out too fast, it doesn't really do me much good at all other than it's 
probably going to catch most of the sediment. Um, I don't expect it to leak out very quickly. What happened was it filled up full of water, and then over the course of several days, the water level has slowly dropped, and that tickles me. I like that a lot because in the springtime, this is going to fill up, probably going to fill up to the brim uh, with the spring melt. And I noticed after a couple of days that down below the, the pond, it was wet down there, but it wasn't wet up above. So I could tell that the water was, was slowly seeping out through the ground, which is fine with me. It's fine with me. Now that might change over time. You know, I push a little organic material back in there. There's a little bit of topsoil in there. Probably going to throw some logs and stuff in to provide some, some structure for uh, amphibians and macroinvertebrates and stuff like that. But for now, uh, I'm really pleased. So I'm really curious to see what it does. You know, something else that I think is kind of kind of interesting is, uh, you know, the way that carbon's removed from the atmosphere. Um, you know, we oftentimes think about the carbon cycle, uh, you know, carbonic acids falling on large mountain ranges and uh, eroding away, you know, magnesium and, and, and um, uh, phosphorus and, and, you know, uh, components of, of silicates and stuff like that in in the uh, in the rock uh, reacting with that rock carrying that that carbon and those magnesium and those things like that to the sea that eventually get locked up and carbonates and fall to the bottom of the sea with with um, uh, small small phytoplankton and stuff like that but you know there's a role that small mountain ranges like the Appalachians uh, take take with uh, with the carbon cycle and I actually read a paper recently that talked about that, that uh, there's more residence time with water on smaller mountain ranges than with, uh, you know, say the Rockies or the Andes or the Himalayas. Um, and the fact of the matter is, you know, we have some murky, you know, uh, sediment rich water here. And that water is, is uh, in contact with that soil and those, uh, those suspended solids for a long period of time. And uh, surely there's some reaction there um, that that's taking place. So, you know, we're not solving climate change here, but, um, it's just one more point to make. Maybe it's not really a fully thought point, but it's one more point to, to say, catch the damn water, hold on to the water. It, it, was it a lot of work? Yeah. I mean, I, but I have a piece of equipment to do it. Um, but I think it's worthwhile doing something like this because now I've, I've, I've altered the landscape in such a way that as long as I can, you know, maintain it by probably throwing a couple of rocks in that ditch um, just to slow the water down a little bit as it comes down. Um, you know, I've changed the landscape in such a way that um, I can hold on to that water and I can allow it to slowly soak in. So I love this shit. It really excites me. Um, in fact, over here on the other side of the road, I'd like to do another one. Uh, because it drops a little bit to about right there. And then you have a drop from the top of the hill down to there. There's a pipe that goes under the road, under the intersection. And then it goes, I have that piece of property down below as well. Um, it actually comes out on the state, but then it almost immediately goes across the property line. And uh, I'd imagine there's a fair amount of water that comes down through there. I know in the springtime, walking in these woods, it's it's pretty mucky down through there. It's pretty saturated, which is great. I mean, it, the water seems to mostly spread out. And I don't probably really have to do anything down here, but I'm most likely going to dig dig a hole down here just to catch that water and allow it to slowly seep out over time. Um, you know, probably going to change the... the uh, the uh, you know the moisture profile and of of the ground down there and there are certain tree species that are probably expecting the water at a certain time but I think there's a lot of benefit to that plus you're catching all the junk that's coming off of off of the road even though this is a dirt road and there's probably not a lot of salt uh, applied up here the vehicles coming up here do have salt on them um, and and that's coming off then you have oil and tar and all the other junk and cigarette butts and your cans, garbage like that from intolerant people, but uh, I can't think of a reason not to catch water. So that's really all this is about. Catch the water, slow it down, soak it in.